Okay, guys, this is the overview on how to use the Elencrom D Light portable uh, studio strobe. Uh, so we're going to just do a very, very quick tutorial and some reminders. First of all, never, never turn it on with your protective cap on it because this is plastic and will melt extremely fast. So make sure nothing is turned on. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is a di little different type of connector. You'll notice that on the front side here, there is an unlock button. And on this unlock button, if you look in close, there's an icon that's a lock and an unlock. So we're going to unlock that and we're going to just unscrew the same direction that you bottle caps, everything. Unscrew counterclockwise and it comes off and you'll notice that we have J type connectors here. Your soft box, when you put that on, you just have to line it up with the two posts that are basically right by the lock and on the opposite side with your J hooks. Throw that down until they get into those channels and like the opposite, you, you turn it clockwise in order to lock it into place and then lock. Okay, next thing is your controls. Obvious power, okay, so the power is on. Okay, so we'll go through these really quick. This icon right here as the light bulb is your modeling lamp. You have four settings on your modeling lamp. You can turn it on, which turns it into tracking mode. So as you turn up or down your power here, you're going to have that modeling lamp go higher, uh, brighter or darker. The next mode would be on at its lowest setting, and the next one would be on at its highest setting. So you notice that the modeling lamp had a 2.0 or a 6.0. It bypasses your tracking and it'll just give you low or high. The, this next button here is your test button, okay? So as you hit that button, it'll test. This eyeball right here is an optical sync, so that that on means you've activated your optical eye here so that you could, in fact, use your Godox uh, speed light flashes to trigger this in case you lose or forget the transmitter. The, uh, the music note button just simply means that when you test it, it beeps when the capacitors are back to full. That gets very irritating, so I like to turn that off. Obviously, turn this off. And modeling lamp, that's up to you of whether or not you have those on or off. Okay, now this is where it gets a little on the tricky side. In order to change the grouping and the frequency or ch a channel that these operate on, you have to take both your up and down buttons and hold them down at the same time until you get that. Now the first one is a registration. There's registration one and registration two. You can never use two. It always has to be on one. It will not work on two. Just skip it. So the next thing you know, notice that it comes off of the setting um, situation in about three or four seconds. Uh, so you hold it down and then you come up to this prop button and you go to the next one, which is group. This is where you're going to go through your groups. Group one, two, three, and four. And those are the four lights that you'd have in the studio. So for example, if you have group one as your main, group two is your fill, group three is your hair light, and group four might be a, uh, a backlight if you want to put gel on the back. Okay, so those are your groupings. And then if I hold that prop down again, you get to your frequencies. And this particular model has frequencies that go from uh, 1 to 10, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, no, 8. So that's all we have. We have 1 to 8. And those are the same thing. So frequency is the same thing as channel. Okay, so for the transmitter, the on button is right on the side here, very similar to your Godox transmitter. And the cool thing about this one is you can shoot in your hot shoe with it straight up or you can actually put a 90 degree turn on it. 90 degree is kind of cool because it gets out of your way if you want to look over the top of the camera. Okay, so how this works here is the very top set of numbers is your grouping, which max matches the first button right here. So if I wanted to just adjust group one, which is my main light, you can go there, group two, group three, group four. So you're all of your groups. Once you get through your individual settings on the groups, you got to go back to all to make sure that all of your lights pop. This is the number one question that I get from students when they're at home using the lights, that only one of my lights are popping. Well, you forgot to put the grouping back on all so that they all pop. The next line down is your frequencies or your channels. So it's um, your matching button right here, channels, will go through this. Now, you notice something very funky about this. Um, this is what I think is a design flaw in the Ellen Chromes, which is not a big deal when you're using them individually, that you have channel one, it skips two and goes to three, 
goes to seven, goes to nine. So if your L and Crom goes from channel one to eight, you literally only have channels one, three, and seven to use. That's it. And the only time that becomes important is when you're in the same studio. So if you're working here at AMP and another student is using Ellen Croms, you've got up to channel one, three, and seven to use here at the school. Okay, so this is where things get uh, interesting. If I pop this right now, uh, that's this test button right here. If I pop it, it's not gonna go on. So I'm gonna have to check to see what, what I'm at. If I go to group one, frequency one, now I know where that's at. I can go here, make sure all is on, and I'm gonna go back to channel one, and this should work, okay? Okay, for these Ellen Croms, we have three different light shapers. So one of them is the obvious uh, soft box, and these are just slip-on socks diffusers. So really easy to, to take off uh, and put back on. So when you sign out one of the kits, you should get one of these. The other light shaper that you're gonna get is a Octabox. So this goes on exactly the same way, your J channels, and you also have your diffuser sock that fits over the outside of it. Okay, the last diffuser that we're going to demonstrate is the Beauty Dish, uh, which this is actually a really, really good diffuser for those of you that are gonna do portraits, fashion, any of that stuff. So it works a little bit different than the Bowens in that once you get the base part of the diffuser down, you'll notice that there's a small little hole down at the bottom and there's two sides to this post. One it has a more sharp point to it. So that sharp point is gonna go into that after we have this on. So one end has a square, and that square peg goes in a square hole, all right? So we have to do it so that the parabolic is facing that way towards the end of the post. You have another screw that goes into the end to keep that parabolic onto the post. And once that, you don't have to turn this down too tight. Once that's there, this is just a squeeze fit. Once you start pushing it in, you'll feel that, that, that it's a rubber lined hole. Once you start pushing that in, you'll feel uh, it's starting to get tighter. There's nothing else that you need to do. And voila, there you are, ready to do some fashion photography. <laughs>